if you are afraid, you're probably doing it right. Like there's got to be a little like, you know what I mean? Like, what am I doing? (laughs) Am I really a 47 year old white woman going into the studio to lay down some tracks? Yes, I am. Okay. Let's just go get it. You know what I mean? Because why not? It It brings me so much joy and who I know I will change on the other side of whatever this becomes. Um, so yeah. And I think Sharon, like this is a, this is an important reminder. Yes, the I am statements, like I am powerful, I am brave, I am an artist, I am whatever it is that you want, right? Call it in, speak it like it's already yours. So you will get those things because what you say matters, what you say happens. But I'd like to remind everybody that you will also manifest what you complain about. Hello and welcome back to Thrive with Sharon podcast. I am your host, Sharon Land, who I'm also a holistic psychotherapist, a metaphysician, and uh, internationally recognized healer and mentor for high performance. Um, And today I am so excited to introduce our community to somebody who has been introduced to me through more community, um, a new friend, Judy Holler. Um, Judy is a public speaker. She's a paid professional speaker. And I met her at Christine Monroe's event, the gala that we both spoke at. And she was the keynote speaker and the closing act. And we all went out of there like with like roaring thunder energy after she spoke. And I can't wait for you all to get that contagious energy as well when we talk to Judy today. Um, But the interesting thing about Judy is she was born with the last name Holler, which if that wasn't some sort of a God wing for her to like have some sort of the direction, but she actually has taken that meaning and literally transmuted that into her mission and her passion, which is to help people to holler at their own dreams. And she's doing the same thing. And one of the things that I really loved about her, her speaking was that she was sharing things that she was doing at the same time as she was sharing with us how we need to holler at our dreams. And it was so good. Um, so Judy, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you. Can you please just follow me around life and like <laughs> introduce me in every room I go into? Like, I feel so seen and I feel so um, fabulous. And just thank you for that. I receive it. And good. yeah, like, you know, source, God, something bigger gave me this last name. And I believe that is on purpose. So yeah, it's become my purpose. And I can't wait to talk about that today. Yeah, I I can't wait for you to talk about that today. Because I think that what one of the things that I recognize that you have already mastered so well, but you're also still continuing to want to master is, is the power of the spoken word. And as mm. we like, in the beginning was the word, right. And the word was with God. Yes, and so I, I, I just think it's, it's so incredible how you are utilizing the power of the word. And I'd love to know more about kind of what is at the heart of your message and your messaging when you go to speak. Yeah. So the essence of the algorithm, maybe it's not the algorithm, the assignment um, that is this alignment I now have behind my last name, the essence of that, and sort of, I guess, the algorithm of any talk I create for, for a stage is to help people be more, to, let me change that last word, to inspire people to be more proactive in their lives. Mm. You know, we don't get what we don't ask for. Right. And we, Mm. we, I think we misunderstand this juicy, beautiful, dopely divine concept of manifestation, which I know we love to talk about. Right. And it's juicy and it's vibey and it's all the things, but the real secret to manifestation is getting clear on what you want, setting an intention, but you got to holler at that intention. You've got to give that intention attention in order to manifest it into existence. So what I'm trying to say is we basically got to we got to call our shot. We got to ask what we want. We got to holler at our dreams. So this is what I'm helping people do. And certainly when I speak, uh, I'm a keynote speaker. So when I speak in, in corporate rooms or, or the like, I work with women 
sales teams, uh, corporations. I, I work with all kinds of humans who are looking to inspire and energize their teams. I'm, I'm really talking about being proactive because the research shows us that people with, humans with, teams with, leaders with, uh, people with proactive personalities are healthier, they're happier, and they're mo more mm. fulfilled. So um, that's the essence of the assignment I've been given to help people holler at their dreams and their goals. And, and we're just being the verb. You've got to be the verb. You've got to move and you've got to give those deeply dope, divine intentions, attention. And guess what will happen? You'll get them. And I think people who holler are really lucky. But what we are more importantly is brave. We're brave. We're, we're summoning yeah. the courage it takes every day to put ourselves in rooms, to jump on podcasts, to ask for what we want, to pitch, to make the sell, to go on the date, to, you know, to lift the weight, like all the things we want are on the other side of something uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so there's a conversation about navigating discomfort as well. So those are some things to think about. Yes. And I love that because, you know, there's such a big difference and, and maybe you can, can share more about this, but there's such a big difference between being proactive towards your dreams. Maybe you might even say your destiny and yes. being hypervigilant about trying to mitigate fear. Mm, right. And yeah. mitigate things that you fear that you don't want to have happen. Right. Yeah. There's so many times we think that we're helping ourselves get to our destination by thinking about all of the potential barriers that might be in the way. And right. So like, wh what do you have to say about that? Okay. Yes. You were speaking to like a certified control freak seven days a week. Like I'm oldest child. Um, and I also grew up in a, a, a dysfunctional home, certainly a dysfunctional relationship with my mother. And so I think it's the oldest um, child and, and not having that um, strong, supportive female role model in the house. I have taken on this tendency, you know, I can't, I could never control my mother's love for me, you know, and, and it, it, to this day, it drives me crazy. So I, 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 I got really obsessed with what can I control? And so I just, I'm yeah. like, okay, so if I can't control this, I'm going to control my little world and I'm going to make sure it's perfect. And I'm going to make sure I know what's coming and all the things, and it's all going to be lined up and organized and perfect. And I've got this on lock. And then all of a sudden you realize real quick that you have nothing on lock and there is nothing in, you know, it doesn't mean that we You're can't leaking. control. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> like leaking. <laughs> You're like, yeah, exactly. So, so I am, I am in recovery and work every day to just remain open to surrender to possibility to flow, um, to alignment and all that stuff that sounds really great and woo 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 woo. But if you unpack it and put some process behind it, it just means that I have to keep moving. Like I'm constantly the verb in my life. So say I get, um, a disruption, a death, a diagnosis, um, a disappointment, um, something, it's going to happen, right? Like it's going to happen. Cool. And I can feel it. I just can't be it. I have to keep moving, right? It's like, I liken it to like the flu. You catch the flu, you get the flu, but you aren't the flu. You have the flu, but you aren't the flu. Like you Correct. may, you may, you may feel fear. You may feel anxiety. You may feel doubt, but you are not doubt. You right. are not fear. You, you are, are not, not stuck. You may feel stuck, but yeah. you are not stuck. Mm -hmm. And so affirmations from a really young age, because I did not get this modeled in my house for my mom, became really important for me to, to be the verb. Like to keep hollering at all the things that I wanted as a little girl to a teenager, to a 20 something, to a 30 year old, to now in my forties, I just kind of keep moving. Um, it doesn't mean I don't allow myself to feel things. And it doesn't mean I prescribe to toxic positivity. Um, cause I can get, I get, you know, I can have dark days just like everybody else. I just, I just have a high tolerance for pain. I, I don't meaning like disruption and doubt and all that stuff and fear. I don't allow myself to stay there for too long, which has been really helpful to me. Like, I don't, I'm not afraid to look stupid. I'm not afraid to fail. I, I can just kind of move faster and be less perfect. And it kind of becomes a competitive advantage, you know? Mm -hmm. Of course. Well, absolutely. And I think that, you know, if you look at well, and I work with high performers, right? So um, like if you look at people who are able to move the needle beyond where most can or do, right? I don't want to say yes. can do. Um, they have had something in their early lifespan development, right? Mm -hmm. The clinical lens um, where 
it, it has caused a challenge and a conflict that they somehow couldn't resolve. Right. So yes. like you, I can't family. fix my mom. I cannot, yeah. I cannot change yeah. her. It drives me right. crazy. Even to this day at the age of 47, I'm just like waiting for her to call Nepal. Like one of these days she's going to call me and be like, you were, I am so sorry. And I see you. And I heard all of those things you said, and I'm so sorry. And like, I have just to reckon with the fact like, yes, that is it. Like, yes, doctor, because yeah. I am trying, I'm like, I'm waiting for this and I can't, it's the one we can't control other people, places or things. And it drives me nuts. So I'm like, okay, how do I not go nuts in right. the process? Yeah. Right? So I've had to like take such good care of myself. Yes. Uh, and uh, you know, you and I have a very similar experience, right. With our childhood and, and, you know, our, our mother's mine was um, extremely strong. We'll just put it mm. that way. Right. Yeah. She had to be strong. Yeah. Different and, times too. I get it. Yeah. Same. And so um, it, it definitely caused this perfectionistic tendency, right. Inside of me. And then this performative aspect. And so for me, part of my healing was to deconstruct all of these reasons to perform and to just be home and be myself no matter where I went. Right. And to realize that, that everything and who I am and the verb of who I am is more than enough. And sometimes it's just enough. Right. Mm. So um, I, I love that you speak to that. And the, but the interesting thing is, is that, so we have all these people who are these high performers, right? Yourself, myself, other people who we serve. Right. And, yeah. and they have this capacity to be able to take on greater challenges. Right. So yeah. where we've, we, you know, we cut our teeth or we were spending, you know, the, the metaphorical aspect of like lifting 25 pounds, you know, curls when we were three years old, right. Like, because of some yeah. of the circumstances that we had to endure. So when, you know, somebody throws a 25 pound weight at us, it's just like, yeah, no big deal. Right. Like yeah. keep it. Steady. Yeah. Keep That's it steady. the gift in it. That's a beautiful perspective. Mm-hmm. What a gift in it. It's like the gift and the pain. It's like, you know, I don't even know if I'd be, you know, my husband and I were just talking about this the other night. I'm like, would I be like, thank God for growing up the way I did, because I'm like, would I be doing this work? Would I be as driven to, um, you know, I, I say that I honor my mom. I may not agree with my mom. Mm-hmm. I may not, um, at times feel like I have love for my mom. If I'm being full, fully transparent, um, I may at times not even want to forgive her, but I feel like I honor her and everything she couldn't be by being more of me, by being all of me, by being as big and beautiful and bold and brave as she could never be because she just did not have the capacity for it. So I think I held up a mirror to so many things she was not able to heal or ready to heal or ever maybe even wanted to heal in herself. Maybe I represent everything she wished she could be. I have no idea. And maybe I'll never know, but I know that I honor her legacy and her mother's legacy and the legacy before them on that side of my family by being everything I can be. I'm taking the evil and take turning it into into good. Like I'm turning the evil into good. And I I can sleep at night with that. And for, and it makes me feel like I'm honoring my mother instead of hating on my mother. Does that make sense? Cause now I'm using it for good instead of evil. You're not doing it to smite her. You're doing it to help to show her the ability to liberate. You know, I used to say that, um, people in my family, um, and sometimes my parents, I really think that they thought that earth was square. Right. Yeah, Yeah. And so for me, um, there was so much neuroses implied in like moving beyond something that they couldn't conceptualize. Right. Yeah, yeah. And there was this like fatalistic um, aspect of uh, and thinking pattern, right. This fear mongering and all that. And oh so gosh. I would take this step in this area where it was the danger zone. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, it was like the sky was falling for yeah. especially my mom. And, um, and, but in, in the first few times that I did that, um, it was really hard. It was scary. Yeah. And I was especially still in an environment where I was dependent on them. And, you know, so I was given all the names of the rebel and then this, and that, yeah, right? of course, the, the labels, right? all the labels just to try and control and keep small. Right. And because that's all that they had the capacity to be able to believe. But then like, 
now it's interesting because if you were to hear part of what my mother shares about me is she's just like, I have no idea what you do. I have no idea how you do it. But all I know is whatever challenge comes your way, I know you're going to be able to get through it. Wow. Right. And like, how so amazing. And, and it's not even validating. It's not like I, it, it's not like, oh, wow. Yay. She finally sees me. But it was like, <laughs> I see it the same way that you see it, where it's just like, yeah. I opened up space where she didn't realize existed. Oh, that's big right there. Right. Because maybe she, she doesn't and didn't, you know, I think of like my mom does never even left the city, the, home, the state she lives in. She's never been on a plane. She's never seen the ocean. Wow. Can you, wow. like, can no, you imagine the, the, the paralysis that the fear she has of the world and of things of stairs of escalators of, you know, she's just gone. So it's so deep and so dark and it's so sad. And so, yeah, like I can't have, um, healthy expectations of someone who isn't healthy and, and she's got to figure out how to figure that out for herself, but I can yeah. continue to just, um, go live every ounce of my life and know that I am, um, myself because of it. And I also think, um, I didn't want to ever, I, I didn't want to go be that. So I'm like, how do I not be that? I go, you know, be, you know, work on the things that can keep me out of the, the danger zone and, in in the way of the light, you know? So yeah. like my, I said this on the stage when I saw you in December, I'm like, I swear, like, Little girls can't be what they don't see. Little boys, little people. We can't oh. be what we don't see, right? And so I, all my friends' moms, I was like obsessed with my friends' moms. And like some of the moms, they were entrepreneurs. What They had a pool. Oh my God, she wore sequin jackets. Oh my God, they hugged. Oh my God, she decorated. <laughs> like, and so I got all this proof that this existed, yeah, that exist. you can have love. Like you're, yeah. like, I just remember that. And some of these women were so important to me and some of them know it and some of them have no clue, but I was watching. I And that's, how I got. And I think it's also mm. why what we take in is so important as an yes. adult, but as a youth, like from what you listen to, to what you read, to what you watch, to what's kind of happening at school. And now kids are running around with phones in their hands. And so it's so, it's so important what we take in because all that affects everything else. Cause we're, you know, we are a, a water being and water is very affected by energy. And so, um, I was watching. And so I think if you're listening right now and you have little kids, just know, and like when friends come over, I mean, kids are watching. And I, I yeah. think we have this really cool opportunity to, to, to be, to, to, to model courage and to model bravery and to, to model like just all the qualities that, um, could inspire a kid who maybe doesn't have that at home. Cause we just don't know what people have going on, but uh, yeah, oh, my, I was obsessed with my friend's moms. I was like, this showed me that there was something different and That's it right. was very validating because I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not wrong. I'm not broken. I'm mm -hmm. in a broken situation with a broken parent. And I knew from a young age that yes, something was real wrong with my mom. Okay. Yeah. Like okay. I knew. Okay. Um, so I like knew I could feel it. I could feel it. And there were other things that, that happened, um, that became proof of it. But yeah, like I just remained wide open, eyes wide open to the world. And, and thank God for my dad. My dad was a, a monk. You know, I think he thought he could save my mom. And there's, that's a whole nother story. But my mom and dad met um, when he was doing um, a tour of duty in the Midwest at a monastery. And my mom was like in trouble. So she was like on like, service community service and so like serving food at this monastery and then like they lock eyes the rest of the series and thank thank god because i wouldn't be here my you know my dad's oh, last name was tattooed god. on my body i'm so yeah. holler <laughs> you know it's it's crazy but that you know i think my dad thought you know and they were so young that you know he could save her or whatever and then found out that you know that that wasn't going to be possible and stayed as long as he could but i thank god for him because i mean i am so holler and i think my dad gave me my, my <laughs> self-worth and my self-love he did the best he could with what he had um but because of him it's not like i i feel so blessed i didn't have too toxic and there's so many people that go through i mean the worst thing that's ever happened to you is the worst thing that's ever happened to you and i recognize that there are people that go through so much deep trauma and so i feel blessed that my trauma is my trauma because I've been able to handle it and navigate it and I've become better because of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, thank gosh yeah. for my dad, you know, because he really helped me. Um, you I, know. I didn't know that about your dad. Yeah. That is so cool. And that's so cute. He's a little <laughs> yeah. monk. He was a monk, a Franciscan monk. 
Oh my yeah. goodness. But you know, the other thing too, as far as like your trauma was your trauma, my trauma was my trauma. And so, and not that I ever, ever, ever say, and I know some, some people in especially spiritual communities say, you know, you chose your trauma and I don't believe that, right? Like yeah. you uh-huh. chose your life, which means you chose your trauma. I don't believe that we chose our life based upon the growth potential that we knew Mm -hmm. that we had in order to be in our souls calling, right. And purpose. I feel that. And at the same time, the reason why your trauma was your trauma is because some of those things happened along the way on the journey, on the road towards your soul's path. So I'm not designed to be able to metabolize yours and you're not designed Ah. to metabolize mine. Right. However, we can be a witness to one another. Cool. And we can love love that. Right. And and that love, please more More love. love. Like I love it. I just read this on, I got stuck in the comment section of a post I saw this morning because, um, it was, it was about, I don't even need to get into the details of what it was about, but it was essentially, it essentially became, it was someone made a position about something that had to do with race. And then I go, Oh no, the comments of this are going to be very interesting. So I just like, it's like a car crash. I'm like, Oh, I just kind of look, but I don't look, I want to see, I hope it's love. Cause the scrolls platform is so love. And then there were a couple people that snuck through like renegades and all this stuff. And then one person just wrote, she goes, I am just when are we going to all just start like loving each other? Like that's literally, she's like, can we just stop? Like when, when it's like, you know what I mean? Like to, to your point, mm-hmm. like it's, you know, we don't have to always agree and we're going to have different trauma and different stories and different perspective. We're all going to be inspired by different things. We're all, anybody who is breathing right now, everything is borrowed from the universe, from our travels, that's from the right. music we listen to, from the adventures, from the, the shows we watch, like nothing is original. Everything is borrowed. Like, like, yeah. and so what are we going to tell every creator on the planet that they're uh, stealing or appropriating or like, you know, you can't say this, you can't like, you know, what, what, yeah. like, what are we doing? Right. And so this person just is like, what, y'all, when are we going to start to loving each other again? And I'm like, amen, right. I'll clap back on that because That's I right. think when you're so in the way of your magic and your work and you've got the blinders on, and you've got good people around you. Like it was the first time in a long time I'd ever even dipped into the comments on Instagram. I'm like, this is why I don't, because I'm like too in the way of my magic and my business and stuff, but there are people that have nothing else going on. So they're just like, you know, lingering around and piling on. And I think this is why purpose and intention and, you know, being you, I wrote this down, you go, the verb of who I am, like really being in the way of the verb of who you are. Yeah. Like you are meant to move and yeah. make and love and kiss and dance and yeah. eat and create. Like I loved that the verb of who I am. I and I am. think people who are really in the verb of who they are, mm-hmm. um, don't have, we ain't got no time for that. We no, no time for that. No, we no. See, see love. And if we don't like it, we change the channel. Exactly. Oh, I love the change the channel thing. And I know you had mentioned that, you know, um, in the speech, right? You were just like, change the channel, change the channel. I think I I might have, who knows? I do, you know, I I dropped the Bonnie Raitt line, you know, the song, let's give them something to talk. I was like, okay, let's drop some Bonnie Raitt. I'm like, if people are already talking about us, because I'm like, people already don't like you. People are judging you. People are are already making funny. This is happening. We can't control this. Okay. So fine. So who you live in your life for you or everybody else? And I said, while we're at it, I might as well drop a little Bonnie Raid on it because if people are already talking, I go, let's go give them something to talk about. about. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so it might've been that. And I could have went on, but like, it's so true. And I'm like, I, I recognize that that song is about like something naughty, which I don't condone or endorse, whatever, but like, let's give it a new meaning, you know, let's go give something to holler about. Right. Because, um, you know, we can go be in the way, be the verb, you know, the verb of who you are. I think that's just so important because when you do that, you just are such a like fulfilled human, but also like a really productive member of society. You're making the world a better place. And I think we need more people who are happy and fulfilled and making the world a better place because the world's a tough place right now. It it is. And and we can't deny that for sure. Um, And I think if we think about, you know, some of the, 
you know, mantra that is like from ancient mysticism and, and, and like the seed sounds and stuff, a lot of them all are about, I am, I am that I am. Right. And so it's such a powerful statement and we have to be so mindful. And you're talking about manifesting a lot in your speeches and in your way of life that like we have our words are our magic, right? It is yes. the wand to help to call those things in. Right. So if, if, we are, I am, right? Being the verb is I am, I am that I am. First, we have to understand like, who is it that we're a child of, right? So if mm. say I am a child of someone who doesn't love me and who doesn't have the capacity and who's sick and da, 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 right? Then we're going to be that more than we're yeah. going to be a child of the universe, right? right? And so I always say, I'm a child of the universe. And, and I, I, I love, I love my family. I love my parents. I love, uh, I love, right. However, I also see that there's something bigger, greater that brought me here and that is guiding me now. And that will help me, um, as I continue to move on from this life to my next yeah, life. Right. For sure. And so knowing that I am a child of the universe and the universe is good. The universe is love. The universe is truth. The universe is lived, experienced, energetic wisdom that goes back all the way to yeah. history before we even had fully formed words. Right. And yeah. so if we can really allow ourselves to transcend all of the things that are right here in front of us, as something that can be a distraction. And if we can just allow ourselves to lift our lens up a little bit more to see that, then it allows us to step over the things that really aren't meant for us to stay with too long. And it yeah. allows us to go out and get the things that are meant for us and to really live in our truth, right? Yeah. And so like that Instagram post that you were talking about, I think that there is so much emphasis being placed on trying to convince people or make people believe a specific experience as truth, but it's not right. And really love does. So, so love does live between wisdom and truth, right? Truth. Yeah. But the truth in since this manufactured thing, it's the truth is like so many layers deep beyond mm -hmm. what that is. Right. So we can love and also have differences. We can love and also argue. Amen. We can love and also have conflict. Yeah. We can love and also have anger. We can love and also have, you know, things going on in the world that we don't want and that break our hearts. We still can love. We have to find our way, our crack yeah. to be able to weave through, right? And to get yeah. to the spaces that we're supposed to be. And that's exactly mm -hmm. the reason why you're here now, right? I because I it. never, I didn't know you before December. Yeah. Yeah, right. Wow. And, yeah, it's and so and fun. You, How many people we haven't met yet, you know? Right. Yeah. And you you declared something. I at, did. At, how, at, so do you want to share what that is? is that yeah. So I did. I I said one of the things. So with I, you know, I talk about hollering at your dreams and calling your shot and being the verb. And so naturally, um, I encourage in a section of my talk, people in the room to be brave and face their fears and holler at a dream or a goal. Yeah. And we do that publicly on purpose because I've, I've shared a story and um, it's kind of sets up this exercise. And so I say, before I do it, I go, okay, well, I might as well take my own advice. I'm hollering at a big dream. I said, you know, by the age of 50, I want to have my first EP on Spotify. Y'all, I want to make music, this like motivational rap and all this stuff and affirmation music and stuff like that. And so I holler at this dream on stage and um, lo and behold, you come up to me afterwards. You're like, oh my, this is what, again, the power of speaking what you want into existence because how can I buy from you? How can I hire you? How can I promote you? How can I pitch you? How can I refer you if I don't know what you want, who you are, what you need, or what you sell? Like you gotta, you gotta let me know. Like if you, you, right. it's hard to be in life or business. If you are not asking for what you want, like, sorry, it's just, it's uncomfortable. We have to flex this muscle. Right. So, yeah. but the best thing is when you start doing this, when you start pitching and promoting and selling and courageously and confidently articulating your, your dreams and your goals and your desires, the angels line up. 
the angels line up to help you. And Sharon comes up to me. She goes, Hey, by the way, love, love. Cause we were both wearing pink and like, she's the vibe, you know, <laughs> if you've met Sharon, she's like the whole vibe. And so, you know, I was just enamored by her, but she goes, my daughter, you know, she's a music producer in New York and she's doing this or not. I mean, she's a making music. She's an up and coming artist. And we're, so if you ever need a connection, I know you live on the West coast, but I'd love to. So you see, so I just love that it just puts in motion, by the way, Sharon, one of the things I wanted to tell you today, I'm going into my, uh, I, I got a producer. Um, mm -hmm. I've been interviewing a lot of people. And so I'm, I'm meeting right. with one here locally. He's between here and New Mexico and he has a studio here in Arizona. And mm -hmm. um, I'm getting in to like my first official studio in two weeks. So I cannot, I more to come, you know, we'll be up, be behind the scenes on Instagram, but like, we're already like back and forth with beats and we hit it off. And I've got to tell you, um, his name is Spanish for tell them. I just I, can <laughs> you body chill. Even, he drops in like an angel because I had hollered at the stream to someone who's actually in my speaker school course. I have a course for like the business of keynote speaking for people who want to like be speakers or you speaking right to grow their business. And one of the gals in my speaker school is a spoken word poet and performer and actress out in LA. She's awesome. Right. And, um, I was hollering about this in one of our live calls, right? I was like, you know, guys, like, let me tell you, like, you're watching me in this transformation right now. Can I tell you something I want to do? Lo and behold, she sends me a DM. She goes, girl, you need to know. And so, so that's how he came to me because I hollered at it. And then when I found out his name's Colin, but his middle name, he goes by his middle name, which is Spanish for tell them. And we were like, are you serious? So I'm like, of course I'm writing that. I got to write a song called tell them. Right. And so yes. it's just so much fun. So we are in the way of it. And we're going out to a studio here and little Wayne uh, recorded his last album there, like went multi-platinum. So just some really big names have come through and it just feels so cool and scary, but like good, scary. And I always like to remind people right here that if you are, are afraid you're probably doing it right like there's got to be a little like a little, you know what I mean? like yeah. what am I doing <laughs> am I really a 47 year old white woman going into the studio to lay down some tracks yes I am okay let's just go get it you know what I mean because why I not it. it brings me so yeah. much joy and who I know I will change on the other side of whatever this becomes right. um so yeah and I think I Sharon it. like this is a this is an important reminder. Yes, the I am statements, like I am powerful, I am brave, I am an artist, I am whatever it is that you want, right? Call it in, speak it like it's already yours. So you will get those things because what you say matters, what you say happens. But I'd like to remind everybody that you will also manifest what you complain about. Yes. Yeah. And I think we forget that. And sometimes I would catch, I went through a little spell and I caught myself constantly in this loop of complaining to my husband about the same problem I was having in my business. And this problem was not going away. It was not going away. It was not going away. If anything, it's been, it was getting worse. And I'm like, well, like my brain, like God sort, like it doesn't know the difference between complaining and manifesting. So be very, like we right. have to find a way to like er, reset the robot. Like, so now I catch myself if I'm like feeling worried about like sales or a revenue goal or something that's bringing me anxiety. I just like, I course correct that really quick to stay mm -hmm. in the way of, mm -hmm. of what I really want to call in because we will get what we, we will manifest Yeah, what we, because we're giving the complaints attention. Yes. Oh my gosh. I, so it's wild many, many, many years ago. You know, I've had, I have quite a, quite a life's journey myself. Right. And so not had some unsuccessful relationships. We'll just call it that. Okay. And I've been there. I'm like talking to a therapist. Right. And she was just, she was all that and so full of herself in all of the good ways. Right. Okay. All okay. of the good ways in the good ways. Okay. And so I'm sitting there and, and, you know, we're unpacking all of this stuff when her and she's like, you know, you are a major manifester. And I was like, yeah. You're and then I'm thinking like, but then I'm looking around and I'm going, I got shit. I got nothing. Like, right. <laughs> and she goes, you're manifesting the wrong things. And I was like, oh. right. Yeah. This was like over a decade ago. And, and I thought, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I never, ever gave thought to the fact that like, I am a major manifester. And yeah. part, part of the belief that I was groomed to believe was that like, I, I, I wasn't. Yeah. Right? I was always lost. I was always empty. I was always, I didn't have power, right? Power, the power right. 
Those are all like and limiting beliefs, complaints. And you're literally things, right? programming your mind. Yeah. But then like, but it was so funny because it was like, it was like, you are a major manifester. Look at what you this. manifested. So and be careful like, what you say. Be care- It's like, oh my gosh, mind your mind. Words are wands. They are wands. You cast spells every day on other people and on yourself with your words. And even if those words are in your mind, you got to reset them. You got to have a little plan in place. Like this was just, I'll give you the silliest example. So I'm getting back into golf. Like I'm like, I need a hobby. I need a hobby. I got to get, and I used to golf. Okay. And I live in Arizona. So I'm like, how am I not golfing? I got to golf. Um, so, so I started golfing again. I'm taking lessons and all this stuff. I'm on the course. And I found out on Monday, because we golfed on president's day. I was like, I said, my husband, I'm like, I figured out what it is. And he's like, what? I'm like, I have stage fright. He goes, the speaker has stage fright. And I go, no, 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 for real. Like when people watch me, like the tee box is busy or like people like the driving range fills out, uh, fills up at our club. Like, and people start watching and they're waiting for you to leave so that you, they can get up. I, and I, I panic and I shank balls and I'm all over the place. And I get, I go, I have stage fright. I have stage fright. I am not good. And I, so the first, like we're playing golf and I, I'm doing really bad on these holes. And I'm like, well, what have I been doing? I've been sitting here for three holes talking to my husband about how much stage fright I have on the golf course. So now I'm telling myself that I have stage fright and that I can't perform when other people watch. So now I'm playing with the sport, you know, we're in a foursome. And so I'm, so then all of a sudden I was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, she knows better. Holler hypes, holler at your dreams. I be the words are wands. Okay. Uh, I am an incredible golfer. I am so confident on the tee box. I am a beast. I am out here to have fun. I am not trying to win the L and I tell you the last four holes. We only played nine. The last four holes. I killed it. I had a blast and it just started like, And then I made a post on Instagram and it was me like hitting a ball that went really far. My husband was filming me stage fright for the camera, killed it. And I wrote on the post, I am a golfer. I am a golfer. I am a golfer. I am a golfer. I am a golfer mantra on repeat. Right. So I have to, so whether I'm complaining about how slow my bookings are or how sucky I am on the tee box when people are watching, how every time I say that, you're bringing I'm speaking it. Like I'm bringing more exactly. of it to me. Yep. So it is worth watching. And I am in it with y'all. Like I am a student of it right now, really yeah. mindful of it because we are power. I have manifested, set an intention and gave those that I've worked for everything I have. We have given all those intentions attention. So if we have done all this, if I have done all this, we are powerful manifestors. So beware, right? You are a powerful manifester. Everything is energy. In both ways. We yeah. don't realize how much power we have and, and how much power we don't utilize, right? Yeah. Oh, that's um, a good one. Yeah. Truth. Yeah. So I'm wondering, I because I know that you're just such a positive person and you really have surrounded yourself with incredible human beings. And I love the, the school that you do and um, how you're helping other individuals. But I'm just curious, you know, beyond the accolades of the accomplishments of how you've been able to help people or whatever, but just in your life, in your daily life, what's the best compliment anyone's ever given you? Oh, this is a really good question. My favorite thing, I'm kind of torn between two and I know them right away, but the first one has to be when I meet someone. So the, you know, I have this like public profile and, you know, we're on Instagram and we're doing the things and we give the speeches and all the stuff. And you know, you can assume things about people or maybe people have seen you and then on Instagram and then you go to a, um, a talk or whatever. My favorite compliment of all time. And this is how I know I am aligned is when people are like, Oh my God, you are just, you are just the same in person as you are online. (laughs) Like, as you are on stage, like you're like the same human. I'm like that, like nothing. Thank you. Like that makes me so happy. And it just gives me so much joy because it means I'm, I'm just self-expressing and I'm being myself and I don't have them. Like, I just, I think for too many years, um, I, I kind of squeezed myself into a co- a box. I called myself corporate Barbie. Like, you know, I did a lot of corporate work. I was doing a lot of trainings around improv and I, I played it way too safe. And, and, and I don't think I, for the last decade, I think, I don't think I was misleading anyone. I think I've always been myself, but I just wasn't, I wasn't here. Like everything I'm doing now is so authentically and organically me. It feels so free. So Um, I think I've always been myself, but now I'm just a freer version of myself. So that's like the best compliment I get. And then I think the other like tie is when I get a response to my newsletter or a post or a keynote and someone says to me, a woman like you says to me, I loved this so much. I'm going to share it with my daughter. Oh, 
because like going back to my mom and like being, and I never had kids of my own. And it's just this beautiful, I could almost cry, right? Like I tell my best friend this all the time. I go, I don't believe I had kids. That was on purpose because this is, there's a greater purpose. And you know, everything that happened with my mom, whatever, like for a woman to say, oh, what you wrote, or like, I'm going to share your book or I, what you said here, I'm going to, I need my 18 year old to know this. I'm like, let's go. Like, that is incredible. You know what I mean? And what a good mama she has. And I always think like, lucky her, like she's got a good mama. You know what I mean? Yeah. Their moms yeah. will bring their daughters and the daughters will come up and want to take a photo, you know? So I love that too. I think it's a tie between those two things. Yeah. Those two are so great. I mean, one is, you know, that you're authentic, which there is, as far as I'm concerned, I think even more transcended than vulnerability, authenticity Oh my gosh, the yes. highest frequency, right? Yes. I think that is so huge. But also I, you know, I really truly believe that we get we are all women, right? And we all get to become the feminine mother in some way. Yeah. Right? And yeah. You found your way to nurture. In, yeah. in meaningful ways that comes through your greatest space, which is, you know, your creativity. So that is like, to me, that is the best totally. feminine way comfort. to be able to show up. And that's so wonderful. And it began with like mothering myself. Like, let's never forget, like, we have to be our own mother. And as so many of us aren't, you no. know, and they may, we may be, I have so many of my friends who are mothers and they don't even mother themselves. And it's like, well, no wonder you're burnt out and tapped out and angry and depressed and lost from yourself because you're lost from yourself. Like you have to mother yeah. her because the better mother you are to yourself. I always say like the way, you know, how someone I go, you want to know how someone feels about themselves. Like you want to know real quick how they feel about themselves. Go look at who they're married to. Go look at who they hang out with. Go look at who they date. Go look at who they're, is in the, what they allow. It's true. I mean, it's like kind of hard, but it's true. It's so like, true. It is like, I know. I, I'm thinking. I'm, I'm well. But like, think about. It. I've been through it. I've had so many douchebags, but I was a douchebag. I thought I was. I wasn't like taking care of myself yeah. or I had have had toxic friendships or business relationships where I've let people walk all over me. And it's like, well, of course I had no self standard. I wasn't, I had lost that connection with my mother ship and I will never do that again. So it allows me to say, I, I, I am worthy of this and I will not tolerate this. And these are my boundaries. And, you know, I am, I, you know, I, you know, so I think that's an important thing to consider. And so, um, you know, who you hang out with is a, is a direct reflection of the qual like the quality you feel about yourself. And so, you know, sometimes we have to shift our environment. I was just talking about this before I got on the phone with you with, with one of my team members. Like I just had another person like sharing this transformation. So like this whole spiritual awakening started like last, like, so it's been like since last February, January. So it's not, we're right in about a year that I've been like, Peeling it all off and burning it all down and wakening up the, all the fires and like bringing Hala to life, right? And it's been this wild, yeah. wild year. And in that process, some things have been revealed and people start, are starting to drop like flies. They're either exiting life or I'm I'm finding that they need to be exited from my life. Like people that I never would have thought in another one just happened like 30 minutes before we got on this phone. And it's wow. so funny if you were to ask me a year and a half ago, two years ago, I knew. Uh, I knew it was a red flag. I knew she was toxic. I knew this was a dangerous business. Um contract to sign. Like I knew it. And I was shown that today. And my team member said to me, she goes, congratulations, you are in a lot, like all of it, it's going to fall off. Like in the rebirth, there is a, you know, uh, you're going to lose, you're going to lose some people. Um, yeah. and, and that's okay because it makes way for the angels and the earth angels and all the, all all the right people. They're all there, but they're, yeah. they're also watching. Right. And I say yeah. this all the time where we're all swimming with these groups, right. Or which are yeah. one and there's no bad person at all. No, it's just not a, it's not it's, the right fit. It's yeah. It's not alignment. And yeah. so, um, so the people who are our highest alignment sometimes sit back and watch because they're like, well, they're not providing a safe container for themselves. And I only want to be with people who are a hundred percent on board with being as safe as they, that's good. Be, right. So 
Um, so I, and, and I, I, I do that right. Where I just kind of, I'm like, you know, we can relate, we can love and relate to anyone from the mm-hmm. proper, healthy, energetic <laughs> distance where we can love them freely without a lot yes. of work. Right. Yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> right. But when you have people that are like in your camp, it's a heck of a lot of work when you're out of alignment. And it's just not, I, I oh it, an energetic drain. Like yes. I feel lighter this last 90 minutes. It's almost a relief. It is like, Oh, so I feel so free, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, how do I make those decisions and listen to those lessons faster? Um, because I do have this Midwest tendency, like, you know, people pleasing tendency that I'm working so hard to slowly, because I, I think we want to, you know, we're, we're not sociopaths. So we want people to like us and all that stuff, but it's, it can be detrimental. And I hang on to relationships uh, for sometimes for too long when I, when, when I've been told by source God that it is long gone. Um, and so it's just a, lane. What a, yeah. What a reminder. And I'm in such a different person. Like my lane, I've gotten in a new car. I'm on a new highway and I'm driving to a new destination. Like my ladder is now up against a completely different house. So it makes sense that we're no longer aligned. Like I've lost some, like four really big team members. And I don't mean lost as in like anything, but it was just like, they're just, yeah, it's just no longer. My ladder is up against a different house now. And, um, that's okay. That's okay. I, I love that. I love that so much. So I'm going to ask you a little deeper question uh, because, you know, that's cool. Um, I want to know how you are doing for real, for real mm. today in your life. I know you just shared that, but like, oh, yeah, know, right. Like, how, how are you? You know, um, ask, how are you? You're like, I'm good. Right. Yeah. No, like, really, I don't think I've been asked, like, how are you? In a for real, long time. real. Um, Oh my God. I'm scared to death. Mm. I'm so scared. I love you. What a question. Oh, that's a good question. It got me. Um, cause I'm, I'm being honest with you. Like I have so much deep change and so much deep transformation happening right now that I am having to rebuild so much. And there is such a surrender in that process okay. and a deep faith and a deep trust. And it can feel so scary to just sort of free fall. You have this thing that you know you believe in and you you have in this talent and this gift and this desire to um, leave the world better than you found it, but you're you're ready to do it in a new way. And, and not everybody understands that new way yet. No. And I've worked so hard to build something and now I'm having to like rebuild. And that is so exciting but it's also really scary. So I'm a little tired and I need a couple wins and I need uh, just some good momentum under my belt. You know, I just need, I just need a little, um, I just need a little wind under my sail, you know? And, and I'm, I'm, I I ask every day, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm open. Like I'm ready for all the angels, all the opportunities, all the right rooms to come my way. But it's, it's been, it's been a little harder than I thought it was going to be, but I also have learned so many life-changing business lessons in this surrender and in this rebuild. That's just going to make me a better entrepreneur, uh, on, on the other side of, of coming through the reinvention, you know, um, so just thanks for asking me that. It felt good yeah. to like publicly say that because I think it's so easy because it can feel shameful and you can feel embarrassed and you can feel, you know, there's so many good things happening, but things are just happening slow. Uh, everything's well, slower than I want them to be happening. And I, the control freak in me does not like this, Sharon. Well, <laughs> but the other thing too, is that like, I, I think you're right on time for this, by the way. Yeah. And thank you so much for being as authentic as you thank are. Thank you for giving me the and space. I, like clearly I feel comfy with you and audience. We just went there. <laughs> we just went there. But I want to, I want to highlight something because you're a woman, right? And we've just talked so much about the feminine and the bringing forward what's aligned. Yeah. And you are living the same kind of track that many, many women who yeah. are, uh, or, or those who identify as feminine, right? That they are, they are 
they are walking the same line as you. I'm going to guess that a lot of your success that you achieved in your life was yeah. achieved in a way that a man achieved its success, right? In a very masculine, direct, legacy leaving kind of a way, right? And so yes. you said, universe, right? Please allow me to be, you know, you showed up in hot pink, right? You are, you are a girl's girl. You are, you know, your, some of your, some of your soft and sweet spots have to do with, you know, mother maternal stuff, whatever, right? Like so, so clear that part of the reason why you're having this pause is because to really be in your feminine essence, I think you're right to live in the pause. I have have to be embrace the magic of the pause. Right. I needed this right now. I it's been given to me because I don't slow down. I don't stop. I just hustle. I grind and move. I build. That's, that's, no, we, that's all masculine. And I am I was told that's cute. Sit down. You yep. are gonna sit in this space and you are gonna get to know her and you are gonna feel scared and you're gonna have to reckon with yourself and you're gonna go into this deep, this deep new wild. Yep good witchy water space. And you're going to learn how to swim there because you'll never make it. If you don't figure that out, you will burn yourself out. You will make yourself sick. You will catch disease and stress and anxiety. Like, and so I, I, Sharon, I, I really think that is one of the biggest lessons I am like being forced into right now. Like this is the first time I've been home for like 60 days in a row. My husband's like in joy this Judy, like for 10 years, all you've done was like build the airline miles. And you know, you've, you've, this is, this Mm -hmm. is okay. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it's interesting. It's the slowing down and it's really been more than just the past couple months. It's really been since last summer, all of this has been born out of it. Shifting. So yeah, yeah, I'm just changing and I'm, yeah. I think I'm being, I'm being told and taught how to tap more into her than, you know, Oof. Yeah. into her and into the feminine that is the flow of yeah. the world. Like you can't right. Right. talk about this on stage. Yes. Like yeah, we cannot force and, and yes, work is a part of it and we've got to be the verb, but at what cost? Like, you know what I mean? Alignment is, is worth finding. Well, I mean, listen, women are the greatest creators of all things, right? Yeah. We, we literally are give birth, give yes. birth, right? So yes. it's not as though we, we, we build, we create things, we grow things, we seed things, they flourish, you know? Um, so it's not as though we don't have the capacity to be able to grow beautiful, beautiful, beautiful things and structures. It just comes in a much different way, right? There's two different paths to take. And one path is aligned for one and one path is aligned for another. And like you said, I mean, you were perfectly spoken there with like, when you're going about something that is, can be achieved success, but you're doing it in a way where it's not meant for you to do it, you will live in disease, right? It is a conflict between who you are and what you want. And you're like, but I, this is the only way I know how to do it. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to keep, keep doing it. Da, 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 right. And, and so that conflict turns into dis-ease, that dis-ease turns into illness and we don't get to choose where it shows up. Oh no. And in right. July of last year, Sharon, I finally was like, no more. Like mm-hmm. I, did a hard right. I go, if I don't take a run at this, if I don't really give this a go, if I don't burn it all down to build a life that truly (laughs) reflects who I really am, I will regret it the rest of my life. And I will end up in disease. I have to wear, I have to do the graffiti. I have to do the hip hop. I have to do the music. I have to maybe make a show. I have to holler at my dreams. I have to do spoken word. I have to wear, I'm like wearing graffiti. Like I have to bring her out. I, I, I can no longer. So I did it. I burned it all down in July and we launched December 1st. So what you're seeing is so like new, like Mm -hmm. she is new and I have to give myself the grace, not an, this isn't an excuse. Like I give myself grace, like, like really, truly like honor, like 
when was the last time I've like taken a little victory lap around the block for all I've already accomplished, all the gifts God source has already given me. And, and, oh my God, what I, what I can't even imagine is around the corner for me. So I, I think, thank you for this space to reflect so on bad. that. And, um, I did burn it all down just in July and we just yeah. gave birth on December 1st to a baby that I was building for like a year in my belly, like from January to December 1st, that's like yeah. 11 months. The baby was in there for a long time, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, so um, so yeah, I am yeah. in this space of uncertainty, but also certainty. Does that make sense? I'm just in the liminal space. Mm -hmm. I'm between nowhere and not yet. Like I'm not there yet, but I'm not back there. So I'm like in this, like, hmm. You're following, you're knowing but there's no evidence for it. There's no tangible evidence for the knowledge. This has never been done before. Yeah, it's just, yeah. there's there's no map. So good. The control freak is freaking out and it's great. I can't wait to, so I'm in the, I finally, I'm like, okay, so I'm working on my next book. I'm like, great. I just, this is all like, this is what I'm meant to, I'm meant to be telling this story and it's all happening now for a reason. So I just got to stay in the way of it. But um, yes, yeah, 100%. that's where she is. That's and how I'm really doing. That's how I'm really doing. I <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. And you know what? Like I, I could feel it. I could mm. feel, I could feel that as you were sharing that. And I know that so many women and men, we're all shifting people, anybody yeah. being souls. We are all feeling the shifts and some of us are fighting it. Some of us are holding, yeah. you know, for dear yeah. others are, slowly gracefully walking away and others are you know burning it down like a phoenix and it's it there's no wrong way but we are all feeling it and the fact that you're brave enough and bold enough to share the truth oh thank it's you so good so thank you judy you thank you for asking me such a well oh gosh yeah no <laughs> that's that's what i do that's <laughs> what you do you're she's good y'all she's good <laughs> You should do this for a living. <laughs> I, I, help, I, I might help. have to get you on retainer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I help pull this magic out from yeah. people. I help to metabolize things, right? Totally. I, Judy, what do you, what, um, we're, you know, I can't believe this time has gone by so no, quickly, no. Uh, but tell us what you'd like us to know. Um, what's some next steps for you, especially since you're birthing this whole new beautiful thing how can we support you how can we join in with you What's oh my gosh I think that the most I mean my gosh coming out with me on Instagram like I am uh trying so many new things over there from music to poetry to movement to inspiration to you'll see you'll just get energy you'll get love it's just like it's a great way to talk to me I'm in my DM so I think maybe come hang out there and just yeah. come take a look at and support the work I'm doing over there and then I think my newsletter might be the best place to be right now. I am in, um, such, you know, obviously I have a website, but, um, I, I'll give you the link. Uh, so folks can sign up to my newsletter, yeah. but every Friday I I've been doing this for eight years and it's evolved, but I, um, and Sharon, if you're not in my newsletter, send me your best email. I'm gonna get you on the list. Like it's I so am. good. I like, okay, good. Yeah. I'm like self-expressing every Friday so in good. new ways. And I, I'm, I, I, you know, for, it's just really, but that's the place to be my newsletter, my Instagram right now. I mean, if you're on LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm bossing up over there too, baby. But you know what I mean? Like my podcast yeah. is in flux. I'm about to really make a big change there. So I think those are the two places. And uh -huh. you know, my goodness, if anybody ever wants to um, learn about the business of speaking, I have a course. So just talk to me about it. DM me and just come take a peek around my little universe. And uh, yeah, I love that. And also you good are energy. speaking still, right? So I am. Yes, I'm an active speaking. keynote speaker. Um, so I am, you know, we are actively, um, pitching this new talk, holler at your dreams to put on stages. I've got so many exciting things in the cooker and I think it's going to be a really great year. We're just, you know, um, really out there trying to find the right clients for the, the work I now do and all of this is on my, on my website, but, um, yeah. So I, I, you know, inspirational, motivational entertainment, um, really hire to open and close conferences to, um, you know, help people be more proactive, um, mm, yes, in their yeah. lives. And it's, it's fun. It's music, it's movement, it's storytelling as you know, with three principles that really, uh, give it substance. So, um, I'm so yeah. proud of it. It's the best work I've ever done in my entire life. And every talk is different because every room is different. Cause you know, I make custom pieces for like, you know, each talk based on the theme of the event and stuff. So, um, it's just the best work I've ever done. I'm so proud of it. So more to come, I, but I love it. Yeah. I love it. And you really did. You 
sent us out just feeling the thunder the last so it, it, fun. It, you guys were the best way it was my it last was, talk of the year you guys so it was a way to go right into christmas yeah it was yeah. so good and um one of the things that i announced as i was hollering at my dream, oh i know this is amazing right to be on live television i am going to be <gasps> oh my god you got booked you're in new york too of course you're by everything this is so exciting in california like, so oh, I'm actually going to go. <laughs> yes, you need to be like a regular. You're going to be, you're going to hit it off and you're going to be a regular. You're going to yeah. be a regular. They're going to call you. And this is all it takes because you get yeah. those couple first things and people can see yeah. you execute. Oh, you need yeah. to be a regular. Yeah. yeah. You've got, a, you've you. got it all going for you. Oh my God. I will be yeah. following along and cannot right? wait for all of it. I'm give me all that energy right now. Give me I was all like, of it. I, I, Cause I was like, I, I don't want to say it. it. I'm, like, I'm in a studio and you're on TV. <laughs> we did it. Like we hollered at a dream in December. That's right. I'm making music literally in a week and a half with our producer and you are going to LA and you're going to be on TV. See what I'm saying? So yeah. how did, can I ask you just really quick, like how did that come? So you hollered at the dream, but I can yeah. bet that you were the verb behind that. You started making yeah. moves and yeah. things dropped totally. into your universe. Yeah. 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 I started like thinking about different topics that I wanted to speak on. And you know, the easiest segue would be like my book, but I was like, my book is great. I love my book, but it's, it's a very kind of specific audience and it's heavy. It's deep, right? Not for new spots and that kind of stuff. So I thought like, what are some of the things? So I just came up with those things, talk to anybody and everybody that I knew. And it was like, oh, I know this person. I know this person. I'll make this introduction. She you hollered at it. That, right. And the next thing you know, right. There and she is. That, but it's, I'm doing it with this beautiful village that I'm part of, right? Like I, some of my very, very close friends, right. And we're all helping one another in their own goals and dreams as well. Right. So like that's yeah. like their secret sauce with all of this. Is yeah. That, you're not in a vacuum. We're not supposed to be here alone, doing these things alone. We actually do well when we are in community, right? In a village. So, um, so yeah. So one of my friends um, was just like, are you kidding me? Uh, name that tune. I I have been dying to get I you on television. So you know, proud of you. <laughs> See what I'm saying? We don't get in this life what we don't have the guts to ask for. So behind any mega star, mega talent, mega luck you see in this world. Let's, if you, we really go back and unpack the luck and the talent, like it is a series hollers. It is a series of verbs. It is a series of actions. It's like action, reflect, reflect, adjust, action, reflect, adjust. This is like the algorithm to like manifesting and like, yes, mega things happening. You take an action. Okay. How did it go? Do I need to make an adjustment? I'm going to pitch once. Okay. Didn't get a response. Let me make a twerk and then yeah. adjust. Right. And this, right. we yeah. do this again and again and again and again. You're going to get yeah. what you want. Well, and the other thing too, is I, I had this big dream and I was keeping it all inside. Like yes, I didn't yes. let anybody know, right. You gotta let it out. And, well, my very good friend literally like lives across the country, but like right next to me all day, I'm saying. day. Right. And I said it and she was like, are you kidding me? I've been dying. Like, let's go. I want exactly like a uh, done deal. Right. And I thought, Oh my gosh. Like I'm I so happy for you. So, I cannot so, wait so, so for so these good. posts. So I will I, be I BTS to, on your Instagram watching oh, yeah. all of it when it's time. <laughs> yeah. I had to share. I had to share with I'm you. I'm so proud of you. Congrats. The first so good. Spoken, like yeah. verbal. It works, baby. It, this it stuff works. works, baby. We got to holler at our dreams. We got to holler louder. So that's right. listening that's to right. this right now, that's the anthem. Holler louder. So I dare you to listen to this episode and go do one thing. Like go do one scary thing on behalf of your dreams and your goals. Like what is one thing you can do on the other side of this podcast to move it forward in a, even if it's in a small way. Um, and then tell us about it, tag us on Instagram when you go do it. Yeah. It'll be super fun. Yes. And maybe even write down what it is. Yeah. Write it down right now. Write it what down is that in big the scary thing? Write it down oh, in yeah, the comments on comments. YouTube, write it down in the comments on yes. Instagram, right? So we're going to have claim the, it, claim it, shout it out. Claim yes. it. There's nothing too, too outlandish. It doesn't, it's, it's not going to happen good. tomorrow. No, it, it's calling it in. So you'll be ready. And who knows who could see it? Who knows who could see it? Who it's so much fun. Knows? I love it. We'll have to go look when this airs. We'll go look at the comments and stuff. So, um, I love this. All right. Well, Judy, it, it, I, I knew it was going to be great. I was so looking forward to seeing you Same, same. ever since I saw you and, um, I just absolutely love and adore you and cannot wait to Back see at you. 
how you continue to shine and thrive and holler at your dreams and see thank everything you, Sherry. Grow. So thank you. And everyone, thank you thank for you. coming today and listening. I hope you're feeling just this huge zhuzh of energy yeah. like I do that you would and I am. And um, follow, make sure you follow Judy uh, on Instagram and um, you know check out her newsletter, go to visit her website, um, engage in, in, in all of her content. She's got great content out there. She's out there doing things that are scary. And it's always nice to hear, you know, people supporting you. Um, so until the next time, please live in peace, love and light and continue to shine that out into the world. Oh.